Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper. I'm up here in the Radio Shack here at the Homestead, and tonight's video is going to be about the touchscreen display on iComms IC7300HF radio. I got a crash course today from a neighbor. I had to do the manual settings in my Canon camera here, so hopefully I'm getting a good capture of the display here. I'm not going to go into in-depth explanations of each of the functions of the touchscreen display. I just wanted to push some buttons with you here to show you some of the capabilities of this radio and the things you can access through the touchscreen display. When appropriate, I'll insert some high resolution photographs of the radio and also screen captures from the display here by pressing or just tapping the power button. It'll actually capture this display here and save it to the onboard SD card. Because I have the lighting level set just right in the camera to capture the display, I'm going to use this Bohr flashlight as my pointer tonight. What you're looking at here is the radio tuned in the 40 meter band. You're looking at the waterfall display falling down, giving you a visual representation of the entire 40 meter spectrum, starting down here at 7 megahertz, going up to 7.5 megahertz. And each one of these lines in the waterfall display represents a, a footprint in the sand or a history of a signal received. And this is really nice for preppers because you can actually fire up your radio and at a glance get a visual representation of all the activity on a specific radio band. So right now we're looking at the 40 meter band and there's not a whole lot of activity out there. We've got a few digital signals down here on this end, some CW and some uh, frequency shift keying here. A few voice signals up here and up on this end we're starting to pick up some broadcast stations. We'll go ahead and start pushing some buttons on the display to give you an idea of some of the functionality here. Up here in the upper left hand corner where it says tune, that's actually monitoring the onboard or built in antenna tuner. I'll go ahead and push the tuner button off camera and you'll actually see the radio find a tuning solution. Now we're tuned up. Next to that you'll see LSB for lower sideband. So if you want to change your modulation mode, just go ahead and tap it and all your options come up. If you want to transition between lower sideband and upper sideband, just tap sideband again and now it says upper sideband. If you want to switch to CW, you can tap CW, and now you're receiving in the CW mode. Looking here at the waterfall display, I can see there's some CW signals down here in the digital end. So what I'll do is I'll tune down there. The waterfall display right now is in the fixed mode. The other mode is the center mode. So as I rotate the VFO knob, or the variable frequency oscillator, I'm going to move this green tuning indicator down to this end. So we'll go ahead and roll that down there now and see if we can pick up one of those CW stations and then we'll show you the audio scope as well. So I'm actually going to turn up the volume here so we can see if we're picking that up. So now I'm hearing CW. Another nice feature of the ICOM IC7300 is it gives you an audio scope as well. So I'm going to press the menu button off camera and bring in the audio scope and now you're seeing an oscope or oscilloscope of that receive audio. Here on the left hand side is the frequency of that transmission in the frequency domain. So typically CW signals are 1000 kilohertz. So there's that spike. You see the spike coming up at the 1000 kilohertz mark. And on the right hand side you're seeing that audio in the time domain. And I have the time set as it goes by so you can actually see the dots and the dashes each time you transmits. But I can speed that up or slow it down. But if I spread that out, the next time he transmits, you'll actually see his dots and dashes. There they go. If I tap this here, I can get the audio scope and the waterfall at the exact same time, which is also a very nice feature. We'll go ahead and turn the volume down there. Let's say you want to change frequency bands. All you have to do is touch the megahertz digit. I'll go ahead and touch that now and we can go to the 80 meter band. Now we've dropped down to the 80 meter band. And I'll bring this, oh we're already there in the lower side band. We'll see if we can pick up some signals. Right now we see some activity here. I'm going to go ahead and expand out the scope and see if we can hunt down a station there. Okay, we have a station there. I'm going to go a little bit off frequency and tune. And we'll come back down. And 
And now we can hear that station there. Now he's kind of weak. The bands aren't the best right now. But we're going to go ahead now and switch from the fixed mode of the waterfall display to the center mode. And right now in the fixed mode, if I turn the VFW knob, the tuning indicator moves. In the center mode, when I turn the VFO knob, the tuning indicator is locked in the center and the waterfall display will actually move. So let's go ahead and hit the center. I hit the wrong button. So now we've actually centered that signal that we're hearing right there in the center of the display. But while we're in the center mode, I can actually change the bandwidth of the display here. Right now we're at 100 kilohertz of bandwidth from this point to this point. I can actually change the span and make that tighter. So now we're at 0.5 kilohertz. We're looking at 1 kilohertz now. 2 kilohertz. 5 kilohertz. And you can see that transmission from that station is getting narrower as the bandwidth opens up. And we're actually starting to see other stations on adjacent frequencies there. Another nice feature is I can actually change the reference or the sensitivity of the waterfall display. So I'll go ahead and change reference and I can rotate the VFW knob and make it more sensitive. Or I can go counterclockwise and make it less sensitive and then I'll just be showing the stronger stations on the waterfall display. If you want to return to default, you can just press and hold default and it'll set it back to 0 dB. We'll go and take a look at some of the menu options here. Off camera, I'm going to press menu. Of course, we have the scope, which is the waterfall. I'll hit menu. That gives you the audio scope. If you tap on the expand, it'll actually expand the audio scope. Tap it again, it'll retract it down so you get to see the waterfall and the audio scope. We'll hit menu again. You can actually pre-record voice messages on the onboard SD card. So if you're contesting, you can tap that and it can be your call sign calling CQ. We'll hit menu again. This is your meter function. You actually can see all the meters that are available to you. Automatic level control, compression, SWR, your current, your power supply voltage. And for those of you who like to run digital, you actually have a temperature indication of your radio. So if you're running digital, of course, you want to run your power back 50%, but this can allow you to keep an eye on your actual temperature. We'll go back to menu. You have a section for SWR. Go back to menu. You can preload memories in. Scan configuration if you want to run scans. A, a memo pad if you want to save additional information. I haven't looked that feature up much, so I'm not sure what it does. You can record actual traffic coming across your radio here and of course that'll save it to the SD card. You can come near to your different settings, adjust your display, your connections, your functions, the up and down arrow keys are pretty self-explanatory. You have ways you can set your time, your SD card, things of that nature. Some basic functionality. We'll go ahead and bring the scope back up. Uh, what else can you do here? You can actually adjust your filters. There's three filter presets by just tapping filter and it gives you a little screenshot of the actual filter you're on. Another nice feature, and I did a video showing how this worked with my ICOM 7200 at the retreat location, is the twin PBT filter. So in that video I showed how you could tune out interference from an adjacent channel by adjusting the skirts of the two filters. Well in the 7300 as you rotate the knobs, of course this is happening off camera, it'll show you in the touchscreen display how that's working and you can see those skirts. So the center knob, I'm rotating counterclockwise now, and you can see how I'm moving that skirt back and forth. And then the outer ring of the knob, I can rotate. Here I'm going counterclockwise and adjust the skirt of the other filter. So if I'm getting adjacent channel interference, I can actually tune that out and get rid of it using the twin PBT knobs. Uh, what else can we do here that I can cover real quickly? In a short video uh, for tuning, we'll go ahead and go back to the scope mode. And I'm going to put this into fix. So as I'm rotating the VFO knob, you can see this green tuning indicator moving. If I want to move that a little bit quicker, I can actually tap over here and select the digits. And now my tuning rate is much faster across the bands. I'm going to slow it down. I can do that as well. I think it'll actually do it. No, it won't do it that way. So you just tap the kilohertz digits if you want to go faster. And if you want to slow down your tune dial rate, 
go ahead and touch uh, past the decimal point and that'll slow it down. If you keep rotating the knob at a consistent rate of speed, it'll automatically jump up the tuning speed for you. So if you're trying to race across the band, you can get there faster. Another cool feature of this radio is if you collapse as opposed to expand the waterfall display, you can actually increase your frequency display size and see your meters real time as you're operating. So right now we have power out. If I tap that, now it's SWR. Tap it again, automatic level control. Compression, my current, my voltage, and my current. We'll go back to power out. Another feature of this radio I want to show you before I wrap this video up is how you can adjust the speed of the waterfall. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the expand button here. We'll get out of that meter mode. And by the way, you still get your meter up here and you can still change it. It's just a little bit smaller. So as I'm tapping on it, you can see how that meter is changing. So you can always watch the health of your radio in real time. So right now the waterfall rate of speed is set to medium. If you tap this again, you can slow that down. You have slow, medium, or fast. Now we're back to fast. So this actually increases the rate of the waterfall going down. And again, each one of these lines is a historical representation of a signal heard, like a footprint in the sand. If you like it fast, you can set it fast. I like to have it at medium, so that's where I set it at. Again, there's a lot of features and capabilities in this radio. Too many to cover in one single video, so I'm going to tackle this one small video at a time, take small bites at it. My plan is to take this out to the retreat location on my next trip. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with a short intro video to feature and show off the touchscreen display on ICOM's IC7300 HF radio. Thanks for watching, guys.